Hello, I'm going to talk to you about umbilical cord prolapse. The first slide shows the, the NICE guidance, um, so we're going to talk about prevention to begin with, um, and that's to reduce the likelihood of cord prolapse occurring at the time of amniotomy. The following precautions should therefore be taken. Prior to induction of labour, assess engagement of the presenting part. Obstetricians and midwives should palpate for the umbilical cord presentation during the preliminary vaginal examination and avoid dislodging the baby's head. An amniotomy should be avoided if the baby's head is high. Also, if there is an acute bradycardia or a single prolonged deceleration for three minutes or more, NICE suggests consider an, if this is an acute event such as cord prolapse and make plans to expedite the birth. So, cord prolapse, the definition. Cord prolapse has been defined as the descent of the umbilical cord through the cervix, either alongside, which is known as a cult, or past, which is known as overt, the presenting part in the presence of ruptured membranes. So we're going to talk a little bit about the background of cord prolapse. The incidence of cord prolapse is between 0.1 and 0.6% of all births. Incidence of cord prolapse in breech births goes up to 1% and cord prolapse carries a perinatal mortality rate of 91 out of 1,000 births. Cord prolapse occurring outside hospital carries a significantly worse prognosis, increasing tenfold. The interval between diagnosis and birth is a contributory factor to the risk of stillbirth or perinatal death. And infants may suffer birth asphyxia owing to umbilical cord compression. This is a time critical emergency. It's a really good idea to discuss transfer to hospital with your community staff and the delays in transfer have been identified as an important factor. It's good to discuss with the community staff that birth asphyxia may result in HIE, cerebral palsy or neonatal death. However, perinatal death after umbilical cord prolapse has been demonstrated to relate more to the complications of prematurity and low birth weight, the predisposing cause, than to intrapartum asphyxia. So, antenatal risk factors for cord prolapse. Um, predominantly, you're always thinking about that presenting part being high and cord prolapse um, being a complication. Um, and that's including breech presentation, multiparity, some fetal congenital abnormalities, unstable lie, oblique or transverse lie, polyhydramnius, external cephalic version, and low birth weight babies less than two and a half kilograms. So in actual fact, all those things you can imagine that they're hovering and and there's nothing in the pelvis essentially. Um, cord prolapse most commonly occurs after the amniotic membranes rupture spontaneously or artificially and the fetal presenting part is poorly applied to the maternal cervix. So intrapartum risk factors including procedure related interventions Things that we need to be aware of are amniotomy, especially when the presenting part is high, an unengaged presenting part, prematurity, breech presentation, internal pedalic version, the second twin coming through, disimpaction of the fetal head during rotational operative vaginal birth or other manipulation of the fetal head, popping a fetal scalp electrode on, stabilizing induction of labor, and a large balloon catheter induction for labour, that, that process of induction. Recognition. Early diagnosis is important. Um, a cord prolapse might be easily visible or it may only be found on VE um, where you can't actually see anything. Cord prolapse should be excluded at, at every vaginal examination and suspecting a cord prolapse um, when there is a sudden change in the fetal heart, for example, if you have a bradycardia or if you're unhappy for any reason with, with any abnormal fetal heart rate pattern, it's always a good idea just to have it in the back of your mind that it could be a cord prolapse. A speculum or a digital V should be performed when cord prolapse is suspected, regardless of gestation. Mismanagement of an abnormal fetal heart rate pattern is one aspect identified in perinatal death associated with cord prolapse. So, what are we going to do? Initial management of cord prolapse, call for help, declare the emergency. Um, things that we've been talking about that are so important. Um, and then you need to relieve pressure by manually elevating that presenting part. So 
concentrating on the maternal position, whether that be exaggerated sims or knee chest, digital elevation of the presenting part, and consider bladder filling if there is going to be any kind of delay. Um, plan for immediate birth or transfer to a consultant-led unit. You need to have an experienced team ready, um, including your anaesthetist, your theatre team and your neonatologist. Have them ready. You need to secure IV access and make sure that bloods have been taken and sent urgently. And if, in a, if you're in hospital, continuously monitoring that fetal heart rate. If you're discussing management in the community, it's a good idea to practice the position of exaggerated sims or knee chest position. And if you can, try and simulate bladder filling so that if you're in the community and you're waiting for the ambulance to come. Um, it's always a good idea to discuss about rapid transfer if the mum's at home or in the birth centre um, and you need to go out to the ambulance, try and avoid using the service carrying chair. It's actually a, a good way of, of discussing with the team of community midwives and paramedics if they're there to actually just walk the mum from the bedroom or from the birth centre out to the waiting ambulance. Um, and then adopting the SIMS position in the ambulance is the knee chest position isn't possible because they'll actually have to buckle her and belt her in position. So um, exaggerated sins in the ambulance. Even if the birth appears imminent, a paramedic ambulance should be called in case of um, neonatal compromise. Good communication is vital between the community team and the maternity unit and the appropriate team. Have them ready because it could well be that you go straight to theatre. That's um, a photograph of um, one of our team members in the exaggerated sims position, lying left lateral with the pillows placed under her left hip, raising her pelvis higher than her head. And it's a good idea to practice that because I don't think people realise just actually how elevated that hip needs to be. This is our algorithm and um, we've covered all the points on the algorithm and um, it's just a good idea. It, it initiates multi-professional discussion if you're going to do this as a scenario and um, to talk through then what the plan for birth should be. Um, so if she isn't fully dilated, she'll need to have an emergency cesarean section. Um, so it's a good idea to initiate discussion with the anaesthetists, the obstetricians, and they can discuss pain relief. Um, and um, bladder filling might even be something that you can consider if your theatres are full um, and busy, but just, just something to, to initiate discussion. Afterwards, really important to have both your cord gases so that you can make an assessment of how the, your neonate is immediately post-delivery. Documentation is really important. We've got one of our prompt performers here, um, which makes documentation very easy. And also um, you'll need to fill in your Datex report. Um, again, really important to talk to the mum, her partner and her family because it'll be quite um, a traumatic experience. That's really important. And the same thing with, if you can, with the team that are involved, um, get together um, to discuss what's happened in the same way, debrief, debrief with the team. Again, it's just something that is so important that this is the kind of scenario that um, you should be doing as a team working together um, on a regular basis. And just finally, we've got a reference here which we use for, it's on the RCOG website and it's useful patient information for the parents that you can give to them before going home or before leaving delivery suite. And just finally, this, the, here are some information sources. These are the sources that we've used to put the presentation together and you'll also find these in your supplementary booklet.